Hi guys, I'm Maggie. Welcome back to I Want My Angst TV Review. I'm going to bring you my thoughts about the new Netflix original movie, Over the Moon. Let me tell you about the story about Over the Moon. It is about this little girl named Fei Fei who still believes in the folklore of Chang'ung, the goddess of the moon. It takes place during the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is about the 15th day of the 8th month of the lunar calendar. Confusing, I know, I'm sorry. Mid-Autumn Festival, most people would say it's actually Chinese Thanksgiving because it is a time to usually sit down together and having a big feast because we don't really have Thanksgiving in China. It's not our thing. Some big names you're gonna recognize in this movie, John Cho, Philippa Su, Sandra Oh, Margaret Cho, Ken Jeong, Kimiko Glenn, and newcomer, Kathy Ong. Over the Moon was directed by Glenn Keane. He is a renowned artist from Disney. You might know his works from Tarzan, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. I think you've heard of these. Glenn Keane is most notably known for winning an Academy Award in 2018 with Kobe Bryant for his animation and directing of Dear Basketball. Fun fact, Glenn Keane actually illustrated one little portion in this movie. He illustrated Chong Ung on the scarf that Fei Fei and her mother wears. Long, long time ago, Chong Ung was married to a very world famous archer, Hu Yi. He, back in the time, there were 10 sons on the world. Apparently it scorched the world and you could not farm, and that's big. So they asked Hu Yi to shoot down nine sons. And in his gift of shooting down the nine sons, he got an elixir of immortality. And since he didn't want to take the elixir without his beloved wife, Chang Ong, he didn't take it. Instead, he asked Chang Ong to hide it so that no one could have it. While Hu Yi was out hunting, his apprentice actually went back to their house and forced Chang Ong to give him the elixir. Instead of actually giving him the elixir, Chang Ong decided to take it herself. And because of that, she floated to the moon to wait for Hu Yi. However, Hu Yi dies as a mortal on earth and legend has it, she's still waiting for him on the moon. Growing up with this legend, I have to admit you don't know how to go into this movie. I actually walked into it completely blank faced and kind of thought maybe I wouldn't like it just because, you know, Hollywood kind of changes stories. Mulan. Girl, the shade, the shade of it all. But actually the liberties were not that bad and they actually try to keep as true as possible to the legend. From the stories when I was told as a child, Hu Yi got actually elixir rather in the movie he got two pills. Not a big difference, that's fine. I knew this was gonna be an animated movie, but what was a big surprise? It was a musical! Say what? The three composers were Christopher Curtis, Marjorie Dunfield, and Helen Park. And all three have a background in Broadway and off-Broadway, which made the music so much better for me. The three of them made sure to write music that was different when it was based on Earth, and it was like more melodic, slow, beautiful, heartfelt and wholesome. And the moment you went on to Lunaria, where Chang Ang is living, it is a K-pop dream with some banging beats. Speaking of K-pop, if you're a fan of Blackpink, the choreographer of many of their music videos, Kyle Hanagami, does the choreography for Chang Ang while she's singing it on the moon. I personally love the song that Chang Ang sings when you immediately get introduced to her. The music's fun, it's upbeat, and even Helen Park has said she wanted to make sure this is like the world's best workout song which I'm not gonna lie, it's going on my playlist. Fei Fei has one important song. It's called Rocket to the Moon. It's this beautiful heartfelt song that is a song for her to make her realize that she has to go to the moon to meet Chang Ong because she has to prove to her father that she exists. And it actually really reminds me of Moana and her song, How Far I Will Go. In a sense, it's a girl's journey and she needs to do this for herself. I love being independent. My favorite song is actually Gobi's, who is my favorite character in the movie. He is played by Ken Jeong, and can you believe he can actually sing? His character is a pangolin. In the movie, you actually see a bunch of animals. There comes the food dogs, which you also know them as guardian lions. There's also some chickens. We see a chow chow, but we don't get a shih tzu. Aww. I have a shih tzu, that's why. I loved Hong Kong's planet. It was bright, it was luminous, it was fun colors. It basically looked like Candy Land Island. Oh, woohoo! It was, looks like Candy Land on crack. It was amazing. All of her little minions are actually created by her when she's sad. When she has tears, little droplets drop out and it looks like little gumdrops. Even though her little luminaries come from sadness, they are her family. These are little creatures that look like animal form, animal form, words. 
we're throwing it out. I do want to talk about Chang'ung's dress. It is gorgeous. It was actually designed by Guo Pei. She's famous for the 2015 Met Gala dress that Rihanna wore. Yeah, that beautiful yellow dress. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Over the Moon isn't just about a little girl going to the moon to meet Chang'ung. It's actually about a little girl trying to get over her grief of losing her mother and her father trying to learn to love again. What brings us together is the writer Audrey Wells. You might actually know her works from The Hate You Give, Under the Tuscan Sun, and my personal favorite, Truth About Cats and Dogs. Unfortunately, this was her last movie. She passed away in 2018. She knew this was gonna be her last film, so she wanted to make it special. And I kind of felt like this movie was a love note to her husband, allowing to love even after her death. And this movie, it's a gentle nudge of telling you, love is not immortal, love is internal. Just because they're not here anymore, you can still love them forever. Oh, wow! One of my big favorite things about this movie is you can tell that they did a lot of in-depth research about Chinese culture. One big thing is when you see Fei Fei take a picture of some people buying some mooncakes, they say zi, which means eggplant, which is actually what you do say when you take a photo in China. Or I'm from Hong Kong, we say zi, eggplant. What I really enjoyed about this movie is it was a fun, wholesome family movie. And sometimes you just wanna see something fun. It made me tear up a couple times, not gonna lie, cause it got to do that, it's an animated movie. Even though I grew, grew up with the story of Mid-Autumn Festival, growing up and celebrating, eating mooncake every year, it was really fun to see a little girl celebrating Moon-Autumn Festival. This is a movie I didn't get to watch as a kid and it's great to see it now as an adult. As much as I enjoyed this movie, there were a couple of moments I were like, meh. The basic trope, the mother dies within 10 minutes. Did we really have to have a dead parent already? Didn't Disney do this every single movie? It didn't have to be a parent. It could have been a grandparent, could have been an uncle, a loved aunt. I just felt like this trope has been done before. Let it go, let it go. Something else that I didn't really enjoy about the movie was the pacing. It could have been tightened in certain areas. Even though it was an hour and a half movie, it kind of felt like two hours. But once they get to the moon and you get introduced to Chang'ung, the movie picks up pace and it's so much better. And it actually speeds up and it's fun and entertaining. And the music becomes more upbeat, enjoyable, and totally sing-alongable. Overall, this movie was really fun. I had a great time watching it. It was fun, it was wholesome. You get to watch this little girl hang out with her bunny. It was a movie I would definitely watch again and download the music to my phone. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm Maggie. Please comment below. We'd love to hear what you thought about Over the Moon. And hit subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and please hit that bell below so you don't miss any more angsty videos. Thank you so much, bye.